And Queen Edith's Way itself is is still closed, is it not? Because of this this Dutch roundabout thing, which and Dutch roundabout seems to be the term used for any roundabout which is different from normal roundabouts. <laughs> yeah, it has become a bit of a buzzword. Um, Queen Edith's Way itself is not shut along the length of it. It's just the Fenden just Road that roundabout, portion close to the roundabout. Yes. Um, so what that means then is that traffic is now diverting down Nightingale Avenue to get across to Hills Road and the biomedical and campus. And then what does that do? I, I guess one can look at this from two perspectives. There's the there's the day-to-day inconvenience, both for drivers and not least the residents of Nightingale Avenue, but also what this does because this is happening over an extended period of time. I know, I know the way my I work with driving. I, I, you know, if, if I had to go up that way and got diverted uh, down Nightingale Avenue a few times, I'd probably end up going that way once the roundabout is back open. Well, that's that's a significant concern, I think. Um, and also the, the degree of rat running through Holbrook Road and Glebe Road, people cutting out earlier um is is very significant i mean we were told that the highways engineers believed the um traffic problems would diminish after a couple of weeks because people would get used to the new arrangement uh i walked along nightingale avenue after what i thought was the rush hour yesterday it was absolutely stacked so now, yesterday that, was particularly bad on the roads, I think. We had the, 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 the one drop of rain and the Cambridge traffic goes to pots, basically. <laughs> well, what's, what's also really interesting is that um, the, the Fenden Road scheme has been designed um, supposedly for cycle and pedestrian safety. But what's happening in the interim is that Nightingale Avenue, which was a relatively safe cycle access to the biomedical campus, is now extremely unpleasant on a bike because all the traffic's diverted down there. So you're kind of giving with one hand and taking away with the other. It's just quite an interesting one, really, isn't it? It makes you wonder as to how long that road will um, be in... Um, once the road is back open and the roundabout is in business, as to how long before that compensates for all the hassles which have gone gone, gone before. Um, I guess that all depends kind of which which camp you're in. Well, and why, is, why is it taken so long? Because our, our travel news here has this wonderful phrase, it's, and it mentions that it's, you know, closed and uh, blah, 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 but it, then it goes on and says, until nine minutes past 11 on the <laughs> 27th of March 2020. Hmm. But not too long ago, that was November, December. So I don't quite understand no, it was, as to why the extension. It was always supposed to be a long project. Okay. Um, the, the date we were given was April, but... But one of the things that I never cease to be amazed by is when they embark on these major engineering product projects, because we had the same thing when they did Addenbrooke's roundabout a few years ago. Um, they start digging holes in the road and then they discover utilities that they didn't know they were there or that they thought were in a different place. And on this build, that's really slowed them down. Um, you know, and to me, the idea that in the 21st century you can't Nobody's map your utilities. Nobody's got some sort of underground, underground map of where everything is. Well, I, I think they have maps, but they turn out to not to be particularly accurate. So, oh. I I don't know what the latest is on completion date for the roundabout. My sense is they have been held up by these utility issues. Uh, so I don't know if the the April date, which residents were originally told, is still correct. Mm.